Okay, this sermon is entitled, Crying Yourself a River for Salvation. I'd like to open up with prayer. And then with a few verses, all right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 17 reads, Hear the right, O Lord. Attend unto my cry. Give ear unto my prayer that goeth not out of feigned lips. Let my sentence come forth from thy presence. Let thine eyes behold the things that are equal. Thou hast proved mine heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and shalt find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Now this teaching I'm about to expose is about the dumbest false teaching out there. There are people out there that are basically perverting the gospel in so far that they're teaching that you have to have tears, sorrow, contrition, and repentance in order to be saved. And this has actually become like a cult. And these people are a bunch of unsaved false prophets. According to them, I suppose exocrine gland secretion specifically your lacrimal glands, as opposed to your mammary, salivary, or sweat glands, is the way of salvation. And this is a bunch of stupidity, and what these people are doing is they're adding to the gospel. Instead of faith alone, it's faith plus tear shed, or lacrimation, or maybe it's no faith at all, it's just lacrimation. According to these unsaved devils, these stupid retards, you have to do this to be saved. Here goes. Now, what these people do, they go into verses in Second Corinthians chapter seven. Then they take it out of context. And this is the M.O. of a false prophet. False prophets just jump into any chapter they want to. They ignore the context. They don't analyze or examine the preceding or the subsequent verses. They don't implement any type of exegesis. They just take the verse that fits their false and erroneous theology, and then they run with it. So let's take a look at a couple verses here. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. And let's start out with verse 8, and we'll stop with verse 10, and it reads, For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent, though I did repent. For I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing, Verse 10, this is their key proof text verse for this stupid tear shed salvation garbage. It reads, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Now, these people try to make this into a salvation verse, just like the stupid reprobates who go to James 2. And they fail to understand that Paul was dealing with saved people jump back to the first verse it reads having therefore these promises dearly beloved let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of god now the two words dearly beloved denote brethren believers saved people he's talking to people that are already saved so therefore when it says salvation in verse 10 it's referring to physical salvation it's not talking about being saved from hell. So this teaching is a bunch of garbage because number one, tears don't save. Number two, the lack of tears don't prove you're not saved. Number three, what does any of this have to do with grace and faith? Nothing. And finally, this is adding a condition to salvation. This is basically saying that if you didn't have some type of emotional, histrionic, melodramatic, tearful, lugubrious, dolorous, forlorn, morose, outright sad experience, then you're not really saved. The conclusion of the matter is this. There's nothing wrong with godly sorrow as opposed to worldly sorrow. And a person can have godly sorrow before they're saved. They can have godly sorrow when they get saved. And they can have it after they're saved. But this has nothing to do with salvation. 
because salvation is by grace through faith alone in Christ alone. And we see a plethora of verses in John that make this clear. John 3.15, John 3.16, John 3.36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. Now, the reason why I'm preaching this is because there are stupid, retarded, unsaved fools on YouTube who say that believing's not enough. You have to have godly sorrow that works repentance in order to be saved. And these people are going to split hell wide open because they can go cry themselves a river. They can go find somebody who has hyperhidrosis and he can sweat himself a river and they can drown in it and go to hell. Because this is not the way of salvation. This is a perversion of the gospel. This is a false gospel and it doesn't save anyone. So that's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.